started, I think we'll probably start with just some introductions of who we are uh, and and then we'll get going. I know we only have 30 minutes and we're hopeful today that are um, that this um, that we're able to present what's happening in the state of Colorado and that there's time left over at the end, uh, obviously for questions and discussion, but would also really love to hear what's happening in your states uh, with regard to non-degree credential evaluation frameworks, if you have them, how they're going, if you're working to develop them. Um, Renice, do you want to start first with an introduction? Happy to do so. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Renice Walker, I get to serve as the Assistant Director of Systems Innovation at the Colorado Workforce Development Council. In our state, the Workforce Development Council serves as the state workforce board and we convene across the intersections of employers, education, workforce development, and economic development, and are tasked with continuous improvement um, in our state. Wonderful. And I'm Ruth Ann Orihuela, and I serve uh, at the Colorado Department of Higher Education as the Director for Credential Pathways and Prior Learning Initiatives, and am, am working with a team across, uh, to build out stackable credential pathways in the Colorado context in, in some of our high value industries in the state. Um, so today we're here Oh, did I mute? No, I'm good. Okay. So today we wanted to talk with you about um, a uh, a piece of that stackable credentials work, which is the quality and in-demand non-degree credential evaluation framework and tool that we have been busy working toward. I um, just wanted to talk today, I'm trying to get to the next slide, there we go. Uh, what, we're gonna talk a little bit about the purpose, the why, why would we need um, this kind of evaluation tool, our process for developing our statewide tool. Uh, then we'll switch and and Renice will talk um, through the product itself. Um, and and then uh, we're hopeful to end with a conversation around different use potential use cases that we see for for using this non-degree credential evaluation tool. And so um, I guess the first question really is why, right? Why do we need a quality credential framework? And in the state of Colorado and potentially in your in your context as well, we've really lacked uh, consistency in terms of um, defining a quality credential, in particular, something shorter than a degree, an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. And so, um, when we when we lack that consistency, there are there are spaces where when we're not working together, when we don't have a unified description or definition and evaluation tool, we can all be approaching approaching this work differently and have um, have very different perspectives on what quality means. Um, we'll also say, as I mentioned before, I serve at. Um, at and I'm building out stackable credential pathways across the state in some of our, our um, in-demand and critical industries. And that comes from some legislation from our 2022 um, legislative session. Uh, Senate Bill 22-192 asks us not only to build out 10 stackable credential pathways across five high-value critical industries in the state, but also asks us to build an evaluation framework so that we understand um, and can demonstrate that the, the, the stackable credentials that we're building into these pathways are credentials of value, that they are quality and in-demand credentials. Uh, does it make sense to be building out stackable pathways in spaces where you don't, um, where, the, where the credentials themselves um, don't necessarily lead to, uh, to the outcomes that we're hoping for for our Colorado learner earners? I'd also say that in the Colorado credential landscape, we um, we have we've had for a number of years a career development incentive program list or a CDIP list, and that um, students in the K twelve space who are earning some of these industry certifications or other um, or other credentials that are on that CDIP list. Uh, the, the districts get reimbursed for students who are completing these credentials of value. And so it's important uh, in that instance to have a, an understanding of what makes a credential of value in order to get those on that list. Then I would also say with regard to the, uh, the uh, Colorado's eligible training provider list, um, you know, we're looking at how we might 
be able to better help our Colorado learner earners and those that support them to differentiate and find quality in-demand credentials to pursue in that very large landscape of millions and millions of, of non-degree credentials that are, are a million plus non-degree credentials that are out there. How do we know, how do we signal to our Colorado learner earners, those that are going to provide the greatest ROI, return on investment for them? So these are just some of the uh, the considerations that we had as we were moving into this, into this process of um, defining a quality in-demand credential. Uh, so when we look at our process, how we went about the building of this credential evaluation tool, we um, we've spent this the this whole year starting in February we we began to convene a stakeholder group to look at and build off of. A, um, we had some previous work, some cross-state agency work to develop a quality credential framework based largely on the National Skills Coalition framework model. And so we had something to start with, but we set a table and invited our advocacy organizations and employer conveners, as well as Colorado Workforce Development Council, Colorado Department of Education, our Colorado Department of Higher Education. These are separated in the state of Colorado. We also had K-12 district representatives, school representatives, post-secondary representatives from faculty and administration, and of course, and importantly, employers, industry partners at the table as we were looking through how we might best um, define um, what we mean by a, a, a quality credential, which as you as you can see from the title of this session, we, we ended up expanding to quality in-demand non-degree credentials. Um, as we moved through and felt like we had done our work to develop this framework and this definition, we put our work out for public comment. And we had a public comment period from July through uh, middle of August, where we offered asynchronous opportunities for feedback uh, for people to review on their own time and in their own space, the, the framework that we created and provide feedback on that. We also offered synchronous virtual sessions that were led uh, by Renice and team from from Colorado Workforce Development Council, um, an opportunity to kind of talk through again the why, what we created, we shared with them in advance of their signing up for those virtual sessions, the, the document itself, so that we could get some um, thoughtful discussion and feedback um, in that virtual environment. And then for those for whom in-person session worked better, we also held in-person sessions for, for folks to weigh in. Um, after that feedback session or fee a period had ended, um, Renice was great about pulling us all back together, taking a look at the feedback that we heard, making some tweaks. We ended up making some tweaks and some changes to the to the language, to the ways in which we were approaching what we were creating. And, um, and then we're anticipating we're in the very final stages of a final product we'll be launching. Um, uh, the Colorado Workforce Development Council will launch our Colorado quality and in-demand non-degree credential evaluation framework, um, either at the very end of September or, or in October of this year. So we're excited about um, the our, all of our, sorry, our work coming to fruition. And it's perfect that my dogs are barking now because I'm going to hand it over to Renice to talk a little bit about the product itself. Thanks so much, Ruthann. Uh, as Ruthann mentioned, as we were having these conversations, what became evident is that we needed to help provide this tool in ways that could help people to focus, not only in the definition, but really what were the types of things in our ecosystem that we were wanting to incentivize. Um, so through, through that collaborative process, we came up with a framework that will ultimately be published. It's a two-page tool that will live on a website, but will be easily integrated into the Department of Higher Education's website, Department of Education, so we can have shared messaging and kind of shared um, socializing and sharing of this product throughout the state. Uh, what you're seeing on your screens now is, um, if we can go to the next slide, it is the visual that will be baked into the actual framework itself. And so those four different components are signals of qualities of quality that are listed within the framework. Uh, it gets at demand. And the way that we define that is aligned with the talent pipeline report. That is a collaborative report, data-driven report that are, um, is produced across our mutual offices and helps to signal what are those top jobs in our economy 
those jobs that do provide a living wage and do have high projected hiring um, that do provide jobs that are critical for us to be thinking about. But it also takes a look at employment outcomes, um, stackability, and also helping us to think through um, evidence of skills as we think through just next steps with how this will be used in the state, really getting an understanding of what are, what are the skills that people are actually learning in their credentialing programs to allow them to better be able to speak to those skills and utilize them to transfer to other opportunities, um, pursue economic mobility as they move uh, in whatever career pathways uh, and educational pathways are making sense to them. And if we go to the next slide, um, on the second page of the framework, it includes a rubric. So I'll speak to uh, more details in a moment about how we're thinking about utilizing this framework, but this is intended um, to be easy to use across each of our different systems as a way of screening. Would the credential that we're talking about uh, be eligible for receiving the types of incentives uh, that we are intending to use it for? So as you can see, um, we've baked out the different kind of checkpoints or um, tests that would be conducted to um, test whether or not a credential is a quality and in-demand non-degree credential and included a rubric within the framework. So if we can go two slides from here. And one more. So as we think about how we'll use the credential evaluation tool, um, Ruthann started to mention these. There are several different existing use cases but one of our goals was to make sure that we did set a framework, a standard that would help to provide some clarity around how we are implementing different programs in the state with the recognition that we know additional programs will also be coming online. Um, so once, two of the programs that uh, our office manages at the Workforce Development Council is an approved programs list for the Career Development Incentive Program. The program itself is managed by our State Department of Education but this list um, defines which credentials, which programs would be eligible to receive the public incentive um, for school districts who are earning K-12 students credentials that are on the list. And so the different criteria that you saw previously in the rubric will be used as a screener for what goes on the list. Um, one of the things that was important with our framework was that we know that there are different parts of Colorado that have very different economies and very different situations. And so what you'll see in our framework is some exceptions. Uh, if there are certain jobs that may not get picked up in the statewide context, but they are very important to a regional application, uh, we do have something within the rubric that would allow for that, uh, that local community to screen that in so that they are able to identify the credentials of value within their region. We also are uh, running our eligible tra training provider list through these criteria as well. Um, as many of you know, eligible training provider lists um, are a requirement of WIOA, and so it is a tool that does signal um, the allocations for public workforce dollars uh, for the programs that are on that list. And the combination of those two programs we are publishing to credential engines, um, credential transcriptor description language, so that we can start to get a canonical list and easy access place where people can go and get additional details about those credentials. We wanted to start first with a framework and a definition by which to screen with. And I'll kick it back to Ruthann to talk a little bit more about how we are utilizing the framework with stackable credential pathways. Thanks. Yes. So as I mentioned previously, the the evaluation tool, this framework was was required in the same Senate Bill twenty two one ninety two that uh, that asked us to build out those stackable credential pathways. And of course, it's important for us to understand and to make sure that we're signaling to Colorado learner earners the um, the value along the pathway uh, in, in our stackable credential space. And so we want what we want to make sure. And I'm just going to go back here for a couple a couple of slides if I could. Uh, we just want to make sure that what we are building out um, as as Renice talked about connects to the top jobs or critical occupations in the talent pipeline report. And there is a little distinction there. We recognize, for instance, that early childhood education and behavioral health are really critical occupations in the state of Colorado. We also recognize that some of those early experiences, early jobs in early childhood ed and in behavioral health may not be family sustaining livable wage jobs, right? And so what we want to make sure that we're doing is first evaluating and affirming that the credentials needed to go move into some of those um, 
early entry level experiences are aligned, um, that people know clearly what the earning outcomes might be at those early stages, at those entry level path careers along the pathway, and what is needed and what that next level wage increase or expected um, earnings potential could look like at the next level of that stackable credential pathway. And along that pathway, ensuring that each one of the credentials and those um, kind of stop out opportunities or maybe entries back into education that we're really defining for our learner earners the value of earning that credential in a transparent way. And in particular with regard to the stackability piece, when that first level job may not lead to a family sustaining livable wage, knowing that what your next step is as you're building your career beyond um, that first entry level career uh, job that you that you choose, if that makes sense. One other thing that I will say that was important as we were building this framework was that we were thinking through it with a mind for how it might be um, how it might be fluid in a national context. So Ruth Ann mentioned when we started these conversations, we did so with the foundation of the National Skills Coalition framework. Uh, we also did take a look at JFF, who is releasing their EQOS framework because we know that for employers in the state, it can get really confusing. There's always different frameworks. There's always, it's hard to keep straight what applies where. And so we're trying to have some consistency while also making sure that the things that were most important in Colorado uh, and that did acknowledge the different points that each of our stakeholders was bringing to the table were pick up and captured in the framework that we're releasing in Colorado. So we shared a, oh, go ahead, Ruthann. I was just going to say, I think that's right. The other thing that I would say here is um, I think we all, this is this is Colorado's first attempt, right? And, and I think we heard a number of times in our feedback sessions, excitement around, I think an expectation that what we would build out might not be perfect, right? But having a consistent definition and a framework that we across um, across multiple sectors can go to and um, is, is a really important step forward in the Colorado context, something that we haven't had before. We shared a little bit about what we're doing in Colorado and would love to hear from you all. First, if you have any questions about what's happening. I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to keep myself on mute until there are questions and I'm going to stop sharing my slides so that we can see one another and engage in conversation. <laughs> 